do you think it's better uh, to actually learn Jiu Jitsu separately, learn the art itself, and then, you know, go through the belt levels? And what do you think is best for Yeah, everybody? that's a good question. I feel like uh, you look at some of the guys that have the best success in MMA, and they're, you know, high level black belts in Jiu Jitsu. Damian Maya obviously comes to mind. Gilbert Burns, his Jiu Jitsu is, you know, insane in the gi. So I would say, it's not gonna hurt. I don't think you're wasting your time doing gi jiu-jitsu. I mean, you're developing your forearm, you're de developing your grip, you're, you're understanding jiu-jitsu at the base of jiu-jitsu instead of MMA. MMA jiu-jitsu is completely different. It really is adding punches, especially in 50-50 positions and you know certain positions where you can get punched, it changes it, but I don't think it's gonna hurt to learn jiu-jitsu from the beginning as a white belt in a gi. I truly believe the gi does help your no-gi game and your MMA game. And not only not only just from the strength and stuff, but if someone's gonna having a tough time passing your guard in the gi, then they're probably not gonna be able to pass your guard in the no-gi. And there's a reason you see most of the ADCC champions. They're all very proficient in the gi also. And if you go with someone in MMA and you're grappling with them, or even no-gi and you're grapple with, grappling with them, and they're a black belt world champion in the gi, you feel their grip strength is a completely different grip strength than most. So, in my opinion, you look at all the GOATs, my professor, Takinho, he won ADCC, he won no-gi world champions in, championships in IBGF, he won gi championships in IBGF, and he, he completely agrees that he thinks gi does improve your game. And not only just that improving your game, but just in, improving your, your mind and stuff. Those 10 minute rounds with advantages, with, uh, with those long, long rounds like that. Just being smart and being, able to be in the moment for so long. I, I personally think the gi would help improve your game a little bit. For MMA, I think the guys, they need to, to be smart in their career. They need to, to prepare to have a cage fight. But I think they need to think about jujitsu itself you need to think of jiu jitsu okay i need to get back in jiu jitsu not think about jiu jitsu for mma that's that's gonna come later you know that's what we've been trying to do to the guys here um when you're training that's why matt t welch and sean molly you know what i mean they came to me to i mean because they started training mma to the, in the mma gym and they started to see the difference all about me and the other black belts and they said well i want to train with you and i said well if you want to train with me let's train with the gi let's think about a completely different jiu jitsu it's not MMA Jiu Jitsu, you're gonna do pure Jiu Jitsu. And that's gonna make your MMA get better in the long term. Don't think now, think in the long term. And they've been doing that for like seven years now. And that's been a huge difference. Now team owners of like Jiu Jitsu gym. He was a, like a MMA purple belt back in the time. Now he's a black belt, really good black belt. And uh, owns a gym. So I think people need to separate that, not just think about Jiu Jitsu for MMA. I think it's important if you have a fight, yeah, do it, but think in the long term, think to improve your Jiu Jitsu, not think about, I'm gonna hit you here or there. You just need to keep thinking about the Jiu Jitsu can help you, and then later on, everything's gonna connect. Stuff my head towards my head. You know how at the beginning um, of UFC, Jiu-Jitsu was the dominant mm -hmm. one, was it? That's why it was created, they wanted to prove yeah. Jiu-Jitsu was the most effective. And then the wrestlers learned the Jiu-Jitsu defense, the strikers learned takedown defense. Now it seems striking with takedown defense is the most dominant. Do you see Jiu-Jitsu somehow coming full circle in some way, eventually? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh... I, I, as a striker, you know, I've seen Izzy do what he's been doing. Um, John Jones, I guess he's, he's a good grappler too, but I'd say uh, it could, I think it could for sure. I, I love jujitsu as a sport, so I wouldn't necessarily just say I'm a striker. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate it. I, I always enjoy if there's a really good grappler fighting to watch that. It's different than a wrestler that'll hold you, than a grappler that's, you know, methodically taking you down, passing your guard, taking your back and, and choking you. That's pretty interesting, so. I think it can. I think we're always going to see a combination of both. I don't think it's ever going to just be like, well, literally everyone at the UFC champ is jiu-jitsu. Everyone at the UFC champ is a striker. I think it's going to be a mixture between you know, both forever.
I believe it's possible, but I think body sta a body stature has a lot to do with it. If you got a long, lanky guy that is so dangerous from front headlock chokes, is so dangerous from different areas, is so dangerous from his guard because he can walk his guard way up, he can do rubber guard, he can do all that stuff. I think those are the good people that are going could get very dangerous at jujitsu. But smaller, stockier guys, I don't know if they're gonna be able to do that in MMA. Was it a few years ago you actually jumped in a tournament here? Do you think it's good, like um, <clears throat> good experience? Like uh, I know Benson used to do it as well, jumping yeah. local jiu-jitsu tournaments. But did you do it as a grappling industry as a few years ago, right? Yeah, I did that. Um, I did the UFC quintet, and I did a, another tournament here. So I did. I've done a couple. I probably won't anymore until I'm until I'm. Re I don't want to say won't anymore actually because I I wouldn't mind doing ADCC trials but someday. Uh, it's just tricky. It's like, do you really want to risk, you know, going and hurting your knee for, and then not being able to train or fight for a while? So it, it, it's risky, just because it is, you know, you don't know who you're going with. Someone might not like me and you know, be really good at heel hooks and fucking want to take my leg out and be able to post it on social media and say they they did that. So people are crazy. Um, so it's very risky doing it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I would like to more. I love competing. And I'm, you know, I've lost a couple times doing jujitsu matches, and it's not like uh, it's, I, losing them to me in jujitsu is not that big of a deal. Losing a fight's different. It's like fuck, it really sucks. But losing in jujitsu, it's like that's not my full time job. I'm going against people that do jujitsu Monday through Friday. Um, so I really enjoyed competition, but I do have to be smart, and I am a businessman. And the smart choice is to not go and compete against people that are, you know, their goal is to submit you. Uh, the advantage of competing in jiu-jitsu tournaments, you're going to get way better competing because you're going to feel those emotions of people watching you. You're going to feel the emotions of another person going 100% on you. So it's really easy to level up your jiu-jitsu a lot faster when you compete. I always want to encourage my guys to compete at least once. Just feel the emotions that you feel stepping on the mat with people yelling and all this stuff. I just want you to feel those emotions once. And then sometimes you can bring those into the training room and train properly. But if people want to just come in and do it as a hobby, then that's then that's cool too. Um, grappling industries, is that the, what it was called? Yeah, that was interesting. Cause I went, I went, I didn't, you don't know who you're going against. You don't know anything really about anyone. I think the first guy I went with was like a blue belt. I don't remember, but then I remember I went with a really good guy, locked up a Darce for literally, I think, four minutes, and my arms were cramped more than they've ever been, ever. Uh, and then I think the next guy I went with was a really, really good leg lock, heel hook guy. He submitted me pretty quick, and then I had to go against him like a next match for the first and second place, and, and he submitted me again pretty quick. But uh, it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. It's... Uh, it's definitely different than walking into a, you know, an octagon knowing there's a million people pay-per-view watching, there's 17,000 people in the crowd. So it's a different feeling, uh, but it was really fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, Robert Deagle, right? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, that was yeah. the guy, yeah. Uh, do you think it's good for athletes, just have up-and-coming athletes, um, do you think it's important for them to jump in to these tournaments like grappling shoes just to get experience, you know? Like, yeah, I think if you're not, you're, I mean, you might as well. What do you, I think it's important for athletes that are trying to compete for sure to do it but even people that aren't trying to you know be world champ just to do it put themselves out there get out of their comfort zone feel those nerves you get to compete like losing a jiu-jitsu tournament is not the end of the world and and you go out there and you lose and you realize like oh that was fun like i had a good time and no one's pointing at me and laughing at me because i lost a jiu-jitsu tournament so i think it's important for you know just the average joe that comes in and trains three days a week two days a week to just go out there and try and just feel those nerves because you're not going to feel them anywhere else and you might as well go out there and experience it confidence i think it can really build your confidence go out there winning will build your confidence for sure but even losing is you get this sense of like i did that i went out there put myself out there i competed i you know i tried my hardest and it can give you an extra little bit of boost to want to train more or come into the gym and be a little bit more focused like okay well i only train twice a week which is two hours a week let me you know instead of chit chatting with my partner the whole time let me actually dive in and, and try to get really good at this because i want to compete again and i want to do better the stem cell technology that we have provides athletes with the possibility of healing uh, whatever tissue uh, or issue that they, they might have 
Like I couldn't play rubber guard at all. It's, it's been over a year and a half since my surgery and just doing this was, ah, I'd feel it in here, just tender. We have a lot of jujitsu and mixed martial arts fighters uh, that we've been friends with for a long time that come in and say, hey, can you, you know, help us out uh, to see if you can do something before surgery. Your body is how you make a living. You know, if you're a fighter, no one's gonna fight for you. It's all you. So if you don't take care of yourself, you're not gonna make the fight night all that often. You know, if you can take the cells that build the body in the first place and inject them into your injuries, they will rebuild the parts of your bodies that are injured. So it really gives the athlete the best chance to heal their body uh, without going to surgery. But there's zero inflammation and this does not hurt at all. This, this is incredible. If you or your training partner, your coach is feeling a little bit broken, you've been training jiu-jitsu, some combat jiu-jitsu a while, and you're looking to get healed up, or if you just want some information, just hit us up at the CellularPerformanceInstitute.com. Tell them Scotty sent you, and we'll do our best to hook you up.